Hi, so today's video is going to be about clinical lab science. This is not going to be about hematology. I'm still Rhea though, but this is just a different topic today. So today I just want to talk about how one can become a clinical lab scientist. Yes, so this shirt is available on my Teespring store. Link is down below. But anyway, First of all, I just want to say that if you set your mind to becoming a clinical lab scientist or a medical lab scientist, it takes a lot of work and yeah, so it just, you have to have a hunger and a passion for it because it's not an overnight project. It is a long process. It takes years to become a clinical lab scientist. So if you do want to be a clinical lab scientist, make sure that is really what you want and that your expectation should match reality, which is that it doesn't happen overnight and it takes a lot of sacrifices and it takes a lot of energy and time to be where you want to go. And with that, let's start. On the path of becoming a clinical lab scientist, you have to look at the NAACLS website. NAACLS is the accreditation agency that's in charge of accrediting clinical lab science and medical lab scientists programs all over the states. So let's go to their website. So see, this is the National Accrediting Agency for Clinical Laboratory Sciences, or NACLS in short. We go find a program so that depending on which state you live in, you can track down where to apply for a program. Let's do Hawaii. Who, who doesn't want to go to school in Hawaii? Come on now. Um, so let's see. So it's still an MLS program. We have University of Hawaii. So they offer it there. Let's click on the link and then admission. So advising is strongly encouraged. So that just means you have to contact them personally. So on this page, you can probably call this and then you can talk to whoever can help you over there. So for me personally, because all of these programs are so different from one another, that's another disconnect as to why this profession is hard to get into because in different states there are different processes. As you can see, one is like a four-year program, one is like Oh, you have to have a bachelor's degree first. Um, another is like you have, you have to have an MLT uh, certification first before you can get into the MLS program. It's just, it's, it's complicated. In California, you need to have a bachelor's degree before you can get into a CLS program. And see, it's not even called MLS in California. It's called um, Clinical Lab Science. There, Clinical Lab Science. It's CLS. So the words... The wording itself of the profession is different depending on which state you're in. And then the, um, the programs are also different. Their admissions are different. In the end, there are core classes that you really need to take seriously if you want to apply for MLS or CLS school. But for this part of the step, I just want you to go into the NAACLS website and check which programs are available locally where you're at. At least you can begin there. And then you can start contacting these programs on like questions that you may have. So if you're already in university and you're working on your four year degree, maybe you're a bio biology major or maybe you're not even a science major and you're just venturing out onto things that you are interested in. Um, I advise, I, I would strongly advise that you work with a STEM counselor, which is a science, technology, engineering, and math counselor. I think that's what STEM stands for, correct me if I'm wrong. Because chances are a STEM counselor would have an idea of what medical lab science is. If you went to a regular counselor, they probably don't know what MLS or CLS is. I think that somebody that is geared towards the sciences would know better and would have more information for you that's helpful to you in order to build your undergrad application towards a program. 
Having said that, I want you to remember one thing. Please, please, please do good on the prerequisites for the CLS program. Um, these classes are hematology, immunology, clinical chemistry, micro, medical microbiology or general, general microbiology, physics that includes light and electricity. Please, 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 please make sure your grades on these classes are at least a B. That's just the reality of it because there's not a lot of programs out there in general like in the state of nevada there was only one program there chances are if people know about this profession and are interested in it a lot of people will apply for it one of the sure ways for your application to stand out is that those core classes are at the top of their game they have either b's or a's on it and so what majors would be nice to have when you're applying for CLS program. I think that if you include, you know, immunology, hematology into your undergrad classes, it will strengthen your chances into getting into the program because you've already built it into your bachelor's degree. So what bachelor's degree are these? You can probably do, you know, science majors such as biology, general biology, but you can do a concentration in microbiology, biochemistry, molecular biology, those things that where you can apply the prerequisites for the CLS or MLS program into your bachelor's degree. That will be highly advisable so you don't have to take any extra classes because those classes will count into your bachelor's degree. That's highly advisable and if you enjoy these classes then you will enjoy the program you know because this this whole thing is really science geared and so you'd be sharpened and focused into what your ultimate goal is which is working in a lab so yeah that's it it's very concise hopefully this video helps i know i had a lot of questions on the reasons why I wanted to become a clinical lab scientist. There was a lot of questions there about licensing and foreign reciprocity, foreign country rep reciprocity. For that, you really have to contact the ASCP because they would have a better answer for you because the ASCP is in charge of the MLS license. And I don't know how that works with foreign transcripts and foreign um, experience, job experience, and internships. I have no idea how that works, honestly. So I will put the link for the ASCP down below so that you guys can just check that out too if you are from a foreign country trying to get into CLS or MLS programs in the States or just want to do a reciprocity kind of thing and take the exam. Yeah, so I hope that website would help you. Uh, again, I'll put the NAACLS website down below so you can check it for yourself and be, you know, be able to contact whoever you need to contact that is within your local reach. My other advice would be to join those orientations that they may have. Some programs will have, you know, orientations just to let people know what the profession is and what the program is about. Please contact again contact those main um, program directors on the NAACLS website because they will provide you with that information and they will help you get the application going there is a shortage of CLSs and MLSs so they will appreciate you reaching out to them please don't be shy on doing that because we do need fresh blood and yeah that's it so thank you for watching today's video and i hope this video helps and if you really want to be a cls please go for it that's it so please do like and subscribe bye